Hey guys, in this video I'm going to do a test. Um, I have snow tires on the uh, Model S right now. They are Blizzax. Um, they're good snow tires. Right now they're at 40 PSI and uh, I want to find out um, what my average watt hour per mile is um, on the freeway, which is which will be um, here, let's see, here it'll be 75 miles per hour. Um, so today is a good day to do it. It is 32 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius. That's an easy conversion. Um, and the skies are partly clear. Uh, the roads are dry. And so that's ideal. Huh. I think I just saw a second generation volt. Uh, so those are ideal conditions uh, for testing without other variables like um, wet road conditions, snow, whatever. Uh, and it's cold, but it's not too cold. Um, actually, when it's like this morning, my tire pressure was about 37 PSI, um, but this morning was about 18 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, uh, yeah, so it warmed up. The tires are now at the pressure they're supposed to be, um, I think. And um, yeah, I'm at the supercharger right now. Um, so I've got about 72% charge right now, which is pretty good on the 70D. Um, so, I mean, that's not really gonna affect efficiency or anything. It'd be cool if I could, you know, run it with my normal tires and then come back, charge up, run it with my other tires. But, and maybe I can do that when I have the tires switched out in the spring. Um, but that's kind of hard to coordinate because if I, I do one run in the morning and another one in the later, that'll be it. After I get the tires done, that'll be different temperatures and then, you know, the numbers won't necessarily correlate anyway. So, I'm guessing with uh, dry conditions and cruising speeds, um, probably, hmm, I want to say between 380 and 400, I think is what it will be on the on the freeway. 70 miles per hour is pretty fast though. A lot of wind resistance. Oh, and uh, there's no wind right now, so. Uh, so we'll see, it might be higher than that. I doubt it'll be lower though. So, yes. And I do have a passenger today. Baby's with me. She's asleep though, that's the uh, sound machine you might hear in the background. So anyway, let's uh, unplug and head off. One of the things about driving in cold climates is um, less an external factor and more the internal factor of the battery temperature. So I've been sitting here charging for about 15, maybe 20 minutes, and my battery is now warm, and so it can receive the max amount of uh, regen. But in the morning, um, but when it's cold, it doesn't it doesn't accept as much regen, so you end up using brake uh, your uh, your brakes, and you lose energy, and thus you don't uh, you use more energy making the car go. So um, and it actually takes a while. Like I said today, this morning it was 18 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, it takes a while for the battery to warm up, even driving around. So I drove about 15 minutes uh, to pick up my wife somewhere, and then we drove to a restaurant, and then drove back, and the battery still was not uh, completely warm, and so I still wasn't getting the full regen. And that doesn't matter so much if you're on the freeway, actually, because you don't slow down that much on a freeway. You're mostly just cruising, but it does make a big difference in the city. Um, so, for example, when I go to work in the morning and it's cold, even if I preheat the car, the battery is still cold. And so, you know, I can average, uh, I, mean, I mean, I only drive like six miles to work, but um, I can average, uh, you know, 500 plus, maybe even 600 watt hours per mile going to work. So um, it makes a big difference. And then on top of that, you add, well, the times I've been in like the 600s, uh, close to 700, that's when there's like snow on the ground and uh, 
it's slushy and there's a lot of resistance. So those are kind of that's kind of a different situation. But all right, we're on the freeway. I'm gonna set it to uh, cruising speed on autopilot of 75 miles per hour. And uh, yeah, it should take about. I do this loop of freeways, and it should take about I don't know, 15, 20 minutes to make it around. So here we go. That was a pretty good run through those uh, tight curves on the freeway. It slowed down by itself and uh, stayed within the line and it didn't ask me to take over even once. So, good job autopilot. Autopilot one. We are back at the supercharger. So let's take a look at the energy use. Wow, that's a really loud truck. Baby's awake. Gotta go home. So that was a pretty good run. Uh, that was a little over 34 miles and we used 13.2 kilowatt hours. And uh, so that came out to 384 uh, watt hours per mile, which is um, that's decent. Uh, that's on the low side of what I thought, but it is between 380 and 400. So again, that was uh, driving in 32 degrees Fahrenheit, dry road, 75 miles per hour with Blizzak snow tires. Um, new this year, so they had plenty of tread, and they were at 40 psi. Um, so that is. So 384 watt hours per mile is definitely higher than um, what I had uh, during my during the previous test with road te with uh, road tires that I did last year. I don't remember exactly how much what what I used last time. I think it was around 340. I'll have to look it up, but I know it was more. Um, so snow tires definitely do um, use more um, energy. Um, there's a little bit more resistance to them uh, because they are uh, softer rubber and that's the whole point of using them is they don't slip as much because they have uh, more grooves, more siping, and they're also a softer rubber so they don't get hard and slippery in the, um, in the winter and in icy conditions. So there's a trade-off there. Um, the other thing is I had mine filled to 40 PSI, which is less than my normal all-season tires are I think those are usually at 45. So I think if I pump these up to 45 psi, I would get even better, um, even better efficiency uh, mileage. But um, they probably wouldn't grip as much, which they would still grip fine. I think I think they're rated 40 on the tire side though. So I don't I don't know if I can go any higher than that. Although they they are like. Um, because the car is heavy, um, it's like 5,000 pounds, there, uh, there's something like extra strength or something like that, I don't know, so um, load, they're like load bearing or something like that. So there, maybe there's a potential to uh, pump them up higher and, and get a little bit more mileage, but I'm not familiar enough with tires and tire safety to know if I can do that. Um, but anyway, yeah, so 384 watt hours per mile at 75 uh, miles per hour. So, um, you know, if you have a Tesla Model S, you're going to be traveling this winter. 
Uh, keep that number in mind. Um, when I, whoops, you okay? Too fast? You need a burp. Okay. Yeah, so if you're traveling um, long distance uh, in the uh, winter, when I did a couple of uh, winter trips and I would be at um, superchargers, I would use 400 watt hours uh, per mile to calculate how much I was going to need for the next leg. So let's say I had to go another hundred and or another hundred miles, then I figured using uh, 400 watt hours per mile, um, you know, as a conservative estimate, that meant I needed to add, I needed to supercharge another 40 kilowatt hours. Um, to get to the next destination and still have a little bit to spare in case something went wrong. So uh, it's kind of a handy um, number. That's sort of my winter number. Um, in the summer, I use closer to 300 because um, with the dry roads and um, higher pressure tires and less and uh, you know lower rolling resistance, you can get much more efficiency. So anyway, I hope that was interesting. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.